welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I have a bit of an ambitious soap design in mind. <laughs> um, I have made mountain soaps with a full moon, and inevitably I always get somebody that says starry night, you know, Van Gogh's starry night, which is like so gorgeous. It's just huge. I'm going to attempt a starry night soap tonight. Let me just show you the picture in case you don't quite know what I'm talking about. There it is. There's the famous Van Gogh picture. Um, so that's the inspiration today for the fragrance that I'm going to use. I got to pull up the scent description here. I'm using this from Be Scented. It's called Heavenly and it's a dupe of something and I'm not sure what, but it smells really good. And I wanted this to just smell kind of out of this world because that's what the picture looks like to me. Let me read the scent description. I'll pull my computer up. It says uh, a romantic uh, floral it has a peony, frieza, lotus, gold musk, creamy sandalwood, bourbon vanilla. That's all combined together for a sensual warmth and sophistication is the description. I love scent descriptions, but uh, it, it just smells really nice. It's very complex. It is not overtly floral. So I think this will be a unisex bar. That's my hope. Um, and it got, you know, decent review that it soaps well. It does have a little vanillin, so it will discolor a little to tan, but that's okay because we're working with a lot of colors in this picture scheme that I'm going to attempt. Oh, mercy. <laughs> um, so I have my little full moon embeds. Even though in the Van Gogh, it's a kind of a crescent type moon, I'm gonna just do a full moon and do like a, a yellow swirl in here. Um, and I will get more into the colors as we get into the soap. Uh, let me show you some of the colors that will probably be making an appearance. And then as when I make my final decision and I get in to it, I will um, definitely show you what I'm using. But so we've got the mountain and the little landscape and it has like little churches and buildings. So at the bottom, there's like a little village, but I'm not really going to go specifically for that. So I'm going to do very dark colors for the mountain, which I will probably incorporate here. My neutral gray this is Nurture Soap. It is beautiful, a very, very dark, and then my black pearl from Nurture Soap. I may incorporate a little activated charcoal in there so that my mountain will be very dark. And then for the little landscapey around, I'm gonna do a mix of greens and blues because there's a little bit of green in there to kind of represent the land mass. So I have my Jungle Green from Workshop Heritage and it's a really nice dark green. And then I will be probably using my Blue Skies and or my Gorgeous Blue, it's called. Uh, just a touch because I need it to be different than the sky, which obviously has yellow swirls and some little starry things in there. I might incorporate my um, bell bottom blue. So I have all these dark blues that I might add a little bit of black into them to darken them up. So I am going to also incorporate for the little star speckles. I saved off some shavings of some lighter color soap. So I'm going to chop these up into tiny little bits um, and I will do a little bit of a yellow kind of in the pot swirl for the sky to represent. And then the moon will be a definite yellow. <sighs> I feel, <laughs> I'm really stretching myself here to even attempt this soap, but you know, let's give it a whirl. It's gonna have pretty colors and a moon in it. So no matter how it turns out, right, it'll be fun. And this fragrance smells great. This is gonna be an aloe vera soap. Let me get to that. Cause you know, when it's all said and done, it's a bar of soap. Aloe vera is going to be the liquid portion. I'm going to get everything pulled together, make some color decisions as I look at that picture more for inspiration. Goodness sakes, this is kind of ambitious for me. Let's come back and attempt to make a starry night aloe vera soap. All right, it's additives time, and here's my game plan. So this is all of the oils and butters in here, and then I'm going to add my additives and the fragrance into here, and I will split this entire batch in half. And I will do the same with my aloe vera lye solution. I will split it in equally in half so that I can deal with the mountain range in one bite and then the sky in another bite. And that way I'm not worried about trace or anything. I have soaked with this fragrance before and it soaps very nicely. It's a well-behaved fragrance, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to put in all of my fragrance in here and that way everything is scented evenly. I just kind of like to do that when I can. So fragrance is in. And now for the additives, we're going to do colloidal oats and kale and clay, just because I love it. And we'll get that blended up, and then I will get to splitting my batch in half, and then we'll get to doing our mountain range <laughs> as it is. All right, let's get this blended up. I'm 
almost ready to get started with the bottom layer, but let me show you the colors that I chose. So for the tall Peaky Mountain range, I have, uh, na uh, sorry, neutral gray. I keep wanting to call it natural gray, but it's neutral gray from Nurture Soap. And this is what it looks like dispersed in a little bit of distilled water just to make mixing a little easier. It's a beautiful gray, kind of a pewter tone. And then for the bulk of the mountain, I have my black pearl from Nurture Soap, which I love. There it is, a little bit of distilled water. So those are gonna be the mountains. And then for the little villagey sort of grassy area, I have just a touch of my Blue Skies Mica from Be Scented. And we're just gonna do a little of that mixed with my Workshop Heritage Jungle Green. And I love this green from them. It is such a gorgeous dark green. So after we get the mountains poured and shaped, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a landscape down at the bottom. So not much, but most of this is gonna be the mountain region. So those are the colors we're using. Let's get the mountain region poured and then we will talk about the sky part when we get there. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So I'm back with my aloe vera lye solution and this has 50% aloe vera juice, 50% distilled water with uh, cane sugar, tussa silk fibers and sodium lactate. So this is half of my lye, this is half of my oils. And I'm going to hand stir this into emulsion and then I will stick blend the colors as I need because I need those mountains to firm up a lot faster than the um, ground portion so that I can shape them before I pour the ground in. So I really wanna have control over what I'm doing here. So hand stirring to emulsion, then we'll split off to the colors and I'm gonna probably give those uh, mountain region colors a really good stir to get them up to, or a blend with the stick blender to get them up to a nice uh, thick trace before we get those poured in and shaped. So when you're hand stirring to emulsion, you just stir and look, and what you're looking for is if any oils separate on the top, and if it looks grainy at all on the thing, the thing, <laughs> the spatula, you know what I'm talking about, right? So you can kind of see it on the top if it's stained blended, so you don't want a false trace, and we're looking pretty good here. So let's get our colors split off and we'll get moving on here.
right, we got our mountain region and our little landscape poured. Uh, and it, this is a very well-behaved fragrance. Let me just say that. I waited quite a bit to get it firm enough, and that's after stick blending it quite a lot. So really well-behaved fragrance. That's always a plus. So I've got my little shreds here that I'm going to put probably in the yellow portion. And then let's show you the colors. This is gorgeous blue mica mixed in a little distilled water. And it is indeed gorgeous. <laughs> this is my, uh, what is it, Blue Skies Mica with a little bit of activated charcoal. I really wanted to darken it up. So that's what's going on in here to make a very dark blue. Um, I did notice there were some little bits of wisps of orange around the stars. So I have my uh, Siesta Sunset Orange from Wholesale Supplies Plus, And I will just be doing a teeny little bit of this in there. And then I noticed some black flecks in the sky, so this is activated charcoal. So those are all the colors I'm gonna do an in the pot swirl. I have my empty pan here. I'm gonna pour them in, mostly blue, and then a little wisp of the black and the orange. It'll have the flecks in there. I'm hoping to just get a real, like, you know, the sky in the picture is so beautiful and swirly. So in the pot swirl is what I'm going for, and then I have my little moon embeds all off to the side here. These were colored with, where is it? There it is, my goldenrod yellow are what these are. So I will, I'm will. i gonna spritz these down with rubbing alcohol when it's time to put them in there so they get a little tacky. I poured these quite a few days ago, so they're nice and dry. Um, so I need to kind of get them tacky so they adhere really well because that would be a bummer when you slice your soap and have the moon pop out. We definitely don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna wet these down when it's time to place them in. And I'm hoping I can have a little bit of colors left over to just do a chevron top, real simple, because the theme of the soap is the body. So I want all the attention on the inside. All right. Let's get the uh, oils and lye over, get to mixing colors, and get to pouring.
right, it's the next day and I am very anxious to get in here. I went back and forth this morning. I did not steam the top because it's not really dull and uh, I think it looks great and I just didn't want to mess with it. Isn't that pretty? I could just stare at that top all day. <laughs> but anyway, I am really anxious to get in here. I, um, yeah. Even though I blended uh, the fragrance, this was a very slow-moving, well-behaving fragrance. It smells divine, but even though I blended it and it looked like it was at a thick trace, as soon as I stirred it or poured it, it loosened up again. So I was working with very fluid pour. It's going to be interesting to see how this looks. Oh, mercy. There's only one way to find out, and that's uh, to get in here. So let's get this out of the mold and get seeing what we've got. the lovely Olga and it's the moment of truth so <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous about cutting these I'm loving the colors so let's get in here oh my my I really hope these are pretty well I think they're gonna be pretty I hope they look like the painting and if they don't they'll just be a very pretty you know soap right I'm trying to keep positive here Whew. all right let's pull one out here in the middle okay all right, are we getting the vibe? I don't know, but they're cool. <laughs> I think these are really pretty. All right, that's a little funky, but still, I think that the, you know, overall look is coming through. Kind of looks like a comet in the sky. Oh. little hole there that I can fill in. I'll show you how to fill that in. Actually, let me see. See, I just, this little shaving here is, oops, pliable soap. So when you have a hole, you can take any trimmings off of your soap and you make a little soap dough out of it because this is fresh soap and you find the color match and fill it in. And now this one doesn't have a hole. Ta-da! <laughs> it's a miracle. Oh, I think these are cool. I'm just kind of wanting to get into these farther and see what they look like down the line. All right, let's get into the middle loaf here and see. Isn't that top pretty? Hmm, I don't know. I'm kind of, uh, I'm trying to decide if I'm loving these or not. I, I think they're very pretty, but I'm not really seeing the starry night picture. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Let's get in here and see. That's looking a little more, but I can see the little flecks and stuff. Um, it did, it was so fluid when I poured it, it got a little muddied, but I think these are gorgeous and uh, I'm gonna be okay with this, right? <laughs> so these are the end pieces and I will show you how to plane them down so that you get the face. The moon embed is just right there. And so uh, you put it through your planer and then you will have a beautiful face on this. I don't normally plane my soaps, but these, um, I just wanted to cut all bars and not do samples on these. So we'll plane these and get that looking beautiful. And I'll show you how I do that. So let's keep going. I wish y'all were here. What do you think? What do y'all think? Did we even get close to Van Gogh? It kind of has that vibe, but uh, next time, if I do this, I will do a little more yellow swirl. I think that would help. But I, uh, at the end of the day, these are really pretty. And they make me happy. It's kind of like a mystical night, magical night at the mountains or something. Very happy with those. And I love how the mountains turned out. I like shaping them. You really have to wait for the, when you pour the bottom, 
You really uh, have to wait for it to get up to piping consistency and then you can shape them. Oh, those look pretty. So it just takes some patience, but I'm very happy with how they look. And that's one way to do it when you have a slab mold. Um, when you have a, a regular standard size soap mold, you can tip it on its side and kind of do mountains on half. But when you have a big slab mold, you have to shape them like that to be freestanding. All right, last loaf we'll get in here. And uh, this was fun to even attempt such a thing. It was a little ambitious. I'm glad I tried it. Uh, these, are, these are beautiful. And this fragrance, I tell you what, I am tickled with this Heavenly from Be Scented. So here's the end one. <laughs> That's a very interesting looking mountain. And we will plane this one to um, get it to a nice pretty face on it. Anyway, what was I saying? The fragrance I love. Um, it was an ambitious soap pour for me. So I'm wondering what other scenes or pictures do you think we should try? If you have an idea of something you'd like me to attempt, send me a picture, tell me it, describe it, I'll look it up. We can, <laughs> I'm willing to give it a try, you know, even if it doesn't turn out exactly, I think it's fun to try. And these are gorgeous. And again, this fragrance is so nice. And I, my husband thought it was masculine scent, but I actually think it's unisex because a lot of the women I talk to really love these sort of kind of um, cologne-y, aftershave-y scents. It's, it's just cool. So I would say this scent would go either way. Got another little hole there that I will fill in. So I'm just going to get to cleaning these up, beveling the edges, stamping, you know, all the good stuff that goes into it. But thank you so much for joining me today. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribe so you don't miss anything going on in the soap studio. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me.